Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is how to create this landing page. And as you can see here, it is designed by Ilgiza from Russia and this is her original design. And one thing that helped me a lot on this design in this design challenge is her Figma file. So you can check her out inside Dribbble. She has other designs that you can look into. And this is the Figma file that I'm able to get from her design. So the thing about the design here, it has this custom curved container that is stacking on top of one another. The thing about this curved container is very hard if you were to do it manually. But fret not, there is a tutorial on how to get the UI elements to Flutter widgets by Kamalash Basu. I will put the link on the description and he explains on how to get these designs into Flutter code. And he also has a tutorial on how to animate them. So shout out to Kamalesh Basu. And I'm going to teach you on how to convert the SVG files, for example, these designs in SVG into Flutter. So the first thing that you need to do is if you were to have a SVG file, that's great. If you don't, then hopefully the designers have a Adobe file or a Figma file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on how to export the SVG from Figma and then you're going to convert this SVG curve into Flutter code. So let's ignore certain parts of this component and let's concentrate on this component over here. So inside Figma or any other design tool, there is an export tab. So for Figma, it's on the bottom left. If you click on it, you export vector and then just download as an SVG. Make sure it's an SVG and you save it. Then open it up inside your web browser, preferably Chrome. I'm using Brave. Then the next thing that you need to do is to inspect. So right click and inspect it. And it doesn't matter how small it is. The most important part is this thing. So from the tutorial that Kamalish Basu explained is that inside the SVG, you will have this path. So you need to copy the path. Go back to your inspect. Let me zoom in for you guys. So you just need to copy this path. And I usually like to copy from the style tab inside your inspector. And then you just copy this. And then once you copy the path, the next thing that you need to do is, so you need to go to this website created by Ichilabs, a website that allows us to convert the SVG into Flutter code, or I would say busier curves code. So what you need to do is you need to paste your code over here, make sure the dimensions are correct, and then you can convert it. So then it will output this bunch of text. So what SVG does is like Bezier Curves where it uses the X and Y axis to make the of the different Bezier Curves that is being created inside the design. All right, so start your Flutter app project and then just create a simple material widget. And I have with me a stateless widget that's called Pneumorphic Start Page. So what we have done is we got the SVG path in Flutter code and we need to put it inside a clipper widget. So a custom clipper is basically a widget that allows you to draw stuff. So it is not paint, but it's more towards like snipping. So you can see that it has clip rectangle, clip path. We are going to use a lot of clip path. So you can use custom clipper to make these kind of designs. So it is basically just clipping away the different edges that you want it to look like. So you have like an arc and a rounded multiple curve or a wave and yeah, it's pretty interesting. So now let's create a simple class and let's call it the top right new pneumorphic clipper and it extends custom clipper with the type path. And at the same time, we need to add the two missing overrides that we have. Now you could see that there's this get clip method previously inside our SVG to Bezier conversion Flutter code, there is this override. So let's copy this override and then let's paste it over here. Make sure you cover the override and this curly brackets. 
and you paste it, missed out something, which is should reclaim. So we will put it as true because we are always changing how this clip path looks like. All right, the next thing is to make this material widget to have stack. So let's have a stack with our children widget and let's have a clip path with the clipper as the top right new clipper. At the same time, let's have the child. So with the color, K pneumorphic color. So how I got this color is I got from the Figma file. So once I save it, you could see that the design has been created for us, right? So it's that simple. However, inside the design, you have the shadow below the curved container. How are we going to add the shadow in our clip path? Well, fret not, there is an open issue where you are able to add a box shadow to clip path. And shout out to Coleman, my man, who created this workaround where you're able to add a shadow inside your clip path using custom paint. However, what's missing is that his shadow is missing a spread radius parameter. So I have created a clip shadow path with the box shadow as the parameters. So you can copy this whole file. So you can copy this whole code. So create a file that's called clip shadow path and just paste it over here. Now you're able to use the clip shadow path. So instead of using clip path, let's use clip shadow path and let's import over here. Now this requires a parameter shadow. So we are using a box shadow with the color gray an offset of negative five to three, maybe with a blur radius of five and a spread radius of 10. If we save this, now there's the shadow that has been created. So it looks similar to what we have. However, if you were to compare the X axis or the left and right position of this curved container, it is slightly more towards the left. So how am I going to move it to the right? What you can do is you can make use of this widget called a line. Wrap your clip shadow path widget with a align widget. Because you're using the stack, you're able to move this thing around. So let's type in alignment with alignment. So maybe with the X axis of 30 and the Y axis of minus one. So the thing is about the X and Y axis is that it starts from zero. So the origin is over here. So in order for us to move this whole SVG, this whole curved container, we have to move it to the right. That means our X axis have to be increased. At the same time, if you want to make it to the top, then imagine this is the zero for Y axis, you have to push it to the top. So it has to be a negative. And if you want positive, it goes down. So in order for us to get the width of this whole app screen, we need to use media query. So I have created this width variable that takes in the middle query dot size dot width. And then let's put the width here to be 99%. Our curved container move to the right. If I were to put this as zero, you could see that it moved to the left. So by adding at the X axis, it moved to the right. Why I put the container as 99% width is because if we were to move according to alignment, we have to make some constraints on our container. If not, then it assumes that our container is just the whole app size, which then doesn't allow us to move our curved container. So now repeat the process for this curved container over here. So the next few seconds will be just a sped up version of how I implement the SVG into Flutter code. So another thing is that if you want to create the next curve container, you have to create another custom clipper. There is this good shortcut in VS Code where you are able to close this whole class. And let's create a class. Let's call top right new clipper. So this is the bottom, bottom, extends, custom clipper path. All right, the same thing. Let's put this into true. And let's paste it over here. Then what you can do is you can just copy this align widget that we have over here. And then we paste.
One thing to take note is that the widgets inside the stack, the most bottom widget is the one at the front. So you have to make sure that the widget that you want to show at the front is at the most bottom. Alright, now it looks very similar to what we have over here. The next part is, is the bottom over here. So it is the same process, so you see the sped up process of this too. Alright, so you can see that if you were to have the bottom left new clipper that we have extracted from the finance app, it rendered it over here. So what we need to do is that, why am I doing this width times 0.99? It's because that if we were to just put the width itself, for example, the top right new clipper. So if I were to put 0.99, it will actually just fill up the whole space because for this container, like I say, it fills up the whole space of the app. So if you were to put any alignment, it doesn't move because it is saying that, oh, you're just moving the whole app screen. Nah, we're going to just stay it here. So you need some sort of space in order for it to tell that, oh, okay, this is a specific width that we need to control. So that's why you just put 0.99%. Hopefully that makes sense. So in order for you to make this squiggly container, you need to make the height 0.99%. Why 0.99%? So we can make sure that there is no discrepancy in terms of the height and width. So let's change this into height. And then make sure you also have the height variable from the media query. So you can just change the width into height. So it actually got a little bit smaller, but that's okay for us. The next thing is we want to put the alignment to the bottom. So what we're going to do is to put the x-axis at zero because it's already placed at where we want at the x-axis. For the y-axis, let's make it to the bottom. So 40.5. So let's save this. All right, so now we already have our first container. The next one is the bigger one. So if you were to compare side by side, just to take note, this is more enlarged. So you could see that the SVG really looks the same as the design itself. So that's a really practical way for you to create these curved containers using SVG and this cubic. So it's a cubic business segment that allows us to do this. So the next thing is that we want to have this PNG. So if you have the Figma app and the file, you can just export it as PNG. However, for me, I have put this inside a link. So I'll put the image link in the description rather than you just downloading it. So one thing to take note about this image is that this image is in between these two bottom pneumorphic clipper. So we have to sandwich it. And that's what I like about this design. At the same time, it is also on top of these two. So if you were to put this bottom pneumorphic widgets at the bottom of the stack, then there will be no problem. So for the image itself, I use fade in image memory network. So why I use this widget is because this fade in image allows me to have an fade in animation. At the same time, you have like a placeholder, which is a key transparent image. It is a package that allows us to use it as a U int it list placeholder. So it's stored inside your phone's memory. It's a very simple transparent image by Brian Egan, just like this. And then at the same time, the image is a string, key home image. I will have this link in the description for you to grab it. And lastly, if we did not put the fit, it will look something like this because the image itself, it has its own constraints. So even though it's a PNG, we are able to just stretch it using the box fit fit width. So fit width allows us to fit the width of the app. And lastly, I use the align widget because it was placed a bit too to the top. So I need to push it down to the bottom using alignment 0.99. And like I say, the height is 0.99. So you're able to move this image around. Okay, so we are left with just two more widgets, which is the text widget over here and the button widget over here. So I didn't exactly copy it because I think it is not something that I want to do with a gradient. You can create a gradient text widget and a gradient uh, material widget. So let's create the first widget, which is the text widget. So I use the alignment top center for my text widget using the H1 or headline one text theme 
and then at the same time I add a padding and this will push my text widget to the bottom. So you can use the alignment and padding for you to manipulate the position of your widget. Now let's see if I can do the gradient. Alright, I'm not going to do the gradient text because I just don't like anything that it, it doesn't make sense for me. So I'll just put a normal text over here. And then for this button, um, I think it is not my taste. So I just put a normal material design button. So for my button, fairly simple. I use alignment bottom center. And then to push it up, I just use a padding with this only constructor that takes in only the button the bottom offset and then I use the size box for the material button to reference my width so I just put 0.8% of the apps width and then you can use the on pressed so I use some padding inside the material button to just fill up the vertical space so I just use symmetric and then at the same time I use the color to match with this header color and lastly I have a text that says let's get started and then with a font size 24 and colors white. So that's about it. I think uh, the hardest part is actually this uh, SVG conversion to uh, Flutter widget because I was doing it manually using Bezier curves. I realized that the Bezier curve is only for very simple and elegant design. If you want to do this kind of design, you are going to use this Cubic 2 or Cubic Bezier for you to custom make this very nicely sharp, I would say, curve design. So that's about it. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this design, just subscribe to this channel and comment down below any designs you want me to create or recreate or just get inspired. Stay safe, all the best. Bye bye. <music>